The first step in fertilization is attraction of the sperm to the egg. Often, sperm have to travel a relatively great distance in order to even interact with the egg. Because of this, sperm must be attracted to the egg via a chemical process called chemotaxis. The mechanisms of chemotaxis differ among species, and these molecules are different even in close related species. This means that even though two species might be close related, two gametes from two different species will not interact successfully. Once the sperm has essentially targeted the egg and begun to interact with it, the acrosomal reaction begins, which is the next step. The acrosome reaction initiates once the sperm has physically contacted the egg. This contact causes the exocytosis of the sperm's acrosomal vesicle and the release of proteolytic enzymes. These enzymes digest a path through the jelly coat to the egg surface. The acrosome reaction is species-specific, based upon the egg jelly carbohydrates that are necessary for proper interaction. Once the sperm has dissolved its way inside of the egg through the outer membrane, the binding recognition begins. The acrosomal proteins mediate the recognition between sperm and egg, and these proteins are named binding. Similar to the chemotectin molecules, these are also species-specific glycoproteins. Proper binding interaction results in successful entrance into the egg and activation of the next part of the fertilization process, regulation of sperm entry, and the blockage of polysperm. Once an egg has been fertilized, it is important for the egg to prevent more sperm from entering. Polyspermy is when two or more sperm are able to penetrate the egg and activate it metabolically. For most species, this is a problem, so there are two major ways that the egg seeks to prevent this from happening. The first is called the fast block. The fast block works via usage of membrane potential and electric charge. When the first sperm binds to the egg and penetrates its membrane, the potential inside of the egg changes to about plus 20 millivolts. At this positive charge, more sperm cannot enter into the egg because they are electrically repelled. This fast block happens roughly 1 to 3 seconds after sperm binding and lasts for a few minutes. The fast block is only present in species where huge amounts of sperm might encounter the egg, like a sea urchin. So it is more important to provide a quicker response block than in mammals where less gametes are present during reproduction. The second action is called the slow block and is a chemical and physical break. Once a sperm has bound to the egg, cortical granules begin to fuse to the egg's membrane and release their contents into the space between the egg membrane and the vitellin. Essentially, the granules' contents begin to harden and form a protective layer around the egg called the fertilization envelope. In addition to that, there are several enzymes called serine proteases, which disable any sperm they contact. So, the enzymes and the physical block in the form of cortical granules stop more sperm from entering once the fast block is worn off. These two block mechanisms usually ensure that polyspermy does not occur. Once the sperm has entered into the egg, and the egg has prevented polyspermy, it can move on to the next step, which is called fusion. Fusion refers to when the female and male gametes fuse together to produce a diploid gene. As the sperm nears the center of the egg, it fuses with the membrane of the secondary oocyte, and the mitochondria from the sperm begin to degenerate to provide material for the first mitotic division. This is why all mitochondrial DNA in humans is maternal. Eventually, the two pronuclei, which are the two nuclei with the haploid DNA, one from the female's egg and one from the male sperm, begin to dissolve. Once the pronuclear membranes are gone, the DNA is floating open, and the gametes fuse via help from spindle fibers. Once the genetic material has joined into a diploid state, the organism is essentially treated. After this step has occurred, the embryo now begins metabolic activity in the next step, which is called activation. Activation is the beginning of DNA and mRNA translation and transcription. Calcium ions are essential in the activation of embryo development, and without calcium ions, development does not occur. Development is triggered by several things, among them the membrane potential change from the fast block and the influx of material from the acrosomal reaction in the sperm, as well as the cortical granule release. These signals all combine to promote the development of the embryo. However, the main mechanism of high diploid activation is still unknown, especially how the sperm releases the calcium ions. Current research suggests that inositol 145 triphosphate or IP3, is one of the main activators of the calcium release channel in the sperm, but much remains unknown about the specificity of this activation. Once activation has occurred, fertilization is deemed successful and the organism continues to develop. In summary, there are four main steps in fertilization. Sperm attraction via the mechanisms of chemotaxis and the acrosome reaction which results in the entrance of the sperm into the egg, 
which leads to binding protein interaction. As this is happening, polyspermia prevention occurs. There are two polyspermia prevention processes, the fast block and the slow block. The fast block works via membrane potential changes and the slow block via the contents of cortical granules. Next is gamete fusion between the DNA of the sperm and the DNA of the egg, resulting in a diploid embryo and essentially the creation of the organism. Following fusion, the embryo's metabolism is activated by the release of Ca2 plus ions from the sperm, resulting in DNA synthesis, mitotic division, and the beginning of development. After all these steps have occurred, fertilization is said to have been successful. 